Hello, and thank you for having me. Like Ben said, my name is Sarah Olson. I'm a UW sophomore, and I run CARE, the uh, Campus Animal Rights Educators Club on campus. This talk was inspired by my animal activism at UW, and now I would like to share my idea with you. This is Coco. He was my best little friend for six years. From him, I learned the importance of compassion, devotion, and an organic diet, and never to be afraid to ask for what you need, which in his case was lots of fresh veggies and attention, a need he made known by constant chirping the moment you came in the door. Animals like Coco, full of love and intelligence, are used and euthanized in labs regularly. We need more humane biomedical research to save them. A commitment to the funding and development of alternatives to animal research models is vital for these animals. And this is my grandfather. He died 13 years ago due to prostate cancer. He was an esteemed American history professor at Oberlin College, and I wish every day that I could share my college experience with him. People like my grandfather, with endless insight to bring to this world, leave us too soon every day. We need more effective biomedical research to save them. A commitment to the funding and development of alternatives to animal research models are vital for these people. And why do I believe in the power of alternatives? Well, I grew up with photos of mouse brains all around my house. My father is a pediatric oncologist and constantly leaving his research open on the family computer or on the dining room table. And I'm telling you, if you want your vegan teenager to spend less time on the computer, this is your solution. Obviously, my father and I have an interesting dynamic. We have both made great strides in the areas that we feel passionate about. For him, fighting cancer, and for me, fighting animal oppression. And I know we will continue to fight for these things until the day that we die. But what does this mean for our everyday interactions? How do we relate when our interests are so seemingly pitted against one another? We came to the answer recently. We came to the conclusion that there is an urgent and pressing need for the funding and development of alternatives. And we need more effective research models. Currently, nine out of 10 drugs that proved effective in animal models failed in human clinical trials. And Francis Collins, director of the National Institute of Health's Human Genome Project, admits that animal toxicity tests in the past have been expensive, time-consuming, used animals in large numbers, and didn't always work. We need better models not only to save animal lives, but to save human lives as well. More precise research models have the power to drastically improve and advance biomedical research to the point where we have more reliable and readily available medicines for the people in our lives. And better models are already being created. My favorite example is Harvard's Vice Institute's Organs on Chips. These microchips, about the size of a flash drive, are composed of clear, flexible polymer containing hollow channels lined with real human cells. They simulate the microarchitecture and function of living human organs, such as the lungs, heart, and intestines, and hope to one day replace the use of animals in science. The Weiss Institute created these chips due to the fact that it can take years and upwards of $2 million to test single drug compounds. Meanwhile, animal lives are lost and often fail to replicate human responses, as traditional animal models do not accurately mimic human physiology. The Institute hopes to build 10 of these chips, link them together, and mimic whole body physiology. This would allow for real-time assessment of culture, of culture tissues, new drug assessment, and toxicity tests. They believe that these chips could be a viable alternative to animal use in the future. <clears throat> and, uh, sorry, could be a viable alternative to animal use in the future. And we should all make the commitment to ask our leaders to invest in alternatives because medicine plays a role in all of our lives. It's a challenge, but I say we go for it. For the sake of medical progress and for the sake of the countless souls lost in animal research every day. Um, it should take priority to ask our leaders for this and while it may not happen overnight it will, and it will take years of brain power and hard work, 
We need to make these commitments due to the fact that the FDA still requires that certain classes of drugs be tested on animals before moving to human clinical trials. It should take priority to ask the to, to create models so reliable that the FDA can change these regulations. Recently, I began to make a list of ways in which animal anti-animal lab activism could become more effective and more inclusive to all types of people. First, we have to ditch the evil scientist meets crazy activist dichotomy. It gets us nowhere. We need to leave these stereotypes behind in order for pro progress and collaboration to be made. A recognition that scientists are equally as passionate about their work as activists are about saving animal lives is vital, and that neither passion is inherently malicious. And furthermore, these stereotypes are often just plain wrong. If all activists are crazy and all scientists are evil, then my family just got way more dysfunctional. And secondly, we need to understand that asking institutional decision makers to shut down animal research programs may feel to them as though they are being asked to put their institution at a disadvantage. If we, as scientists, activists, and citizens come together and ask institutions to not to, for alternatives in addition to a reduction or halt in animal use, we are no longer asking decision makers to solely make an ethical decision, but to make a scientifically progressive decision as well. My hope is that my university will not sacrifice our reputation as a world leader in science, but rather enhance it by investing in alternatives and subsequently reducing animal numbers. Alternatives can and should be a marker of scientific excellence and a goal that all scientific institutions should strive towards. And finally, we have to leave behind the widely believed notions that animal models are highly predictive, are highly predictive of what will happen in human clinical trials. This simply isn't true. In any other industry, there would be no tolerance for the low quality predictions that these models provide. And yet scientists continue to use these models because the stakes are so high in finding cures. It is currently believed that animal models are the best methods available. Let's change this. Let's make the best methods available actually be the best they can be, highly reliable and state of the art. In this sense, a commitment to alternatives is beneficial to scientists, activists, patients, and animals alike. And it's up to us to ask for it. My hope is that my university will commit an annual budget to the funding and development of alternatives to animal research. And my hope is that labs and universities across the nation will follow suit. My hope is that scientists and activists will come together to show the world that animal activism can be scientific progress. And that through these efforts, such reliable alternatives will be created that the FDA will not require animal testing or research under any circumstances. What are your hopes? What are your dreams for the future of lab animals and for finding cures? This is a pivotal moment in the history of biomedical science. Will you join me in moving forward? Thank you.